part of the stream right now. I'm done waiting on you, sir. Done with this. Do oh, it. Hey, hey, I can actually see the comment. See, you know, YouTube like revamped its whole live streaming thing. I can actually see the comments from the live control room now. That's cool. So mm -hmm. I don't have to try a faster and easier way to stream. That's okay. fancy. I'm gonna I like over and watch your thing. I like faster and easier ways to stream. Yeah, uh, I also like that they do that broadcast thing where, you know, when the stream's about to start, it's not just a countdown anymore. It looks like a legitimate broadcast, like, waiting thingamajigger. Yeah, because I, I, I loved how in the past it was always like, hey, guys, when does the live stream start? And there's like a big-ass counter counting down in the middle of yep. the screen. It's like, when is it going to start? So this uh, is actually Tech Talk 88. Let me see. Oh, the title. I like that. By now, we really have no idea what's going on. I, that's that's probably the most accurate title we've used, Jay. It only took us 88 shows to figure it out. I mean, about, <laughs> and about and about, and about 60 of those were with you. So Yeah, we should probably be clear, though, that in this episode, we do actually have a document that was hastily created in the last 20 minutes by me. So Jerry, hey, did, Jerry did agree about five hours ago to do the doc for me. <laughs> probably more than that. <laughs> And then 15 minutes before the show, he's like, oh, fuck, Doc. Yeah, that's right. I'll be right back. I was like, squirrel. So, yeah, no. But, hey, I, I still hammered out, like, three pages in 20 minutes. So that's not – I'm not – I'm pro – actually, wait, no. Shit. Five pages. Dude, so, I, so I'm getting ready to pull the, the whole the whole Anchorman thing where I have no idea what I'm reading or talking about. And you could just be like, Jay is a big fuck face and smells like poo. And I'd be like, you know, the, speaking Sorry. of Jay, that Jay is a big fuck face and smells like poo. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's right. I got, I got I mean. back on this one because I've I have at least fifteen minutes experience with all these these topics that I've typed down. Oh well, then you're an expert by the YouTube standards. So uh, did we we did we haven't rolled the intro yet, have we? No, we're rolling it right now. Do it. Welcome to TikTok number eighty eight. By now, we really have no fucking idea what's going on, but there will be tech tonight. So enjoy. I can't see you because you added the F word in there, which made it made made it which made it ten percent different than the original. Therefore, copyright. <laughs> oh shit! No, <laughs> please, oh, please don't flag us, bro. And we already got eight down votes, which is awesome. That is, thank is you that, guys. Is that it? We appreciate it so much. Well, you know, it's not the end of the show. By the end, I'm thinking we might hit a hundred. Oh, if, if we if we only hit a hundred, we're doing good. Yeah, because then you heard on the internet, hate is the new love. That's what it is. A hate is the new love. Is it? Should yeah. we just should we just skip a few topics and start on that one? <laughs> yeah, let's just do it. Might as well just segue right into the elephant in the room, and that's uh, that that that's our uh, favorite Canadian. Is she Canadian? She is. And that's this, even worse. No, that, no, no. This is hilarious because I was just thinking about this this morning. I was like, I can't think of like mean Canadians. Canada is like the nicest nation on earth. It's like the one country that nobody wants to bomb. Or do anything to like Canada can defend themselves with like a Cessna and a nine millimeter. Canada pistol. is That's the new Switzerland. They they are they basically are like Switzerland is jelly of Canada, and here you have oh, only ha only hamburgers don't cost forty five dollars. This like is in true. Switzerland. This is true. I heard about that from Logan. He was yes. uh, he was bitching about that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were eating when we were in Seattle and the burger was like twelve bucks. He's like, man, only twelve bucks is like the cheapest burger ever. I'm like, what the fuck are you smoking, Logan? He's like. <laughs> You don't even know. Oh, my God. But anyways, uh, we're, we're, we're going to keep the topic of Nicole Arbor kind of brief targeted her. And then we're going to talk about the real issue behind everything that's going on. And that's that's censorship and that's, bullying. Oh, I, I was going to say blonde hair dye and silicone. Blonde hair dye and silicone works, too. I mean, it, it, the, the, the ends is the same here. No, but anyways, you have Nicole Arbor, basically. The, she's, you know, this Canadian, uh, blonde, not unattractive woman. Who is a? She fancies herself a comedian. I, I like how you worded that without directly like that? complimenting her. <laughs> I because, know, I know, right? I because if we're going, because if we're going based on personality, she's pretty damn crypt keeperish. No, oh, she is. She's she, she, she's definitely the Skeletor in in that arena. Like as soon as she opens her mouth, you're like, oh man, any any redeeming qualities <laughs> there out the window. But anyways, she's always been a shock type comedian. If you go back and watch some of her old videos, which I highly recommend you don't, because you'll probably just like want to cut yourself. But but uh, not, but she was never funny shock comedian like say Seth Rogen. No, no, no. That that was the big difference. Is you could tell that she was just trying to be funny by being offensive. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's the difference is there, there's a difference. Like when you go to like Richard Pryor and uh, what is it like Lois CK and stuff like that, there's, there's, it's, it's strategic. 
you I, like I can listen to Ricky Gervais talk about fat people for 15 minutes and I find it quite hilarious because one he was a fat person himself yeah at one point in time so he can relate and the other thing is is he's self-deprecating to a certain point too That's to where to it kind of rounds it out you can tell that it's a very jovial nature and when you have her saying it it literally comes off as hatred yeah that's what I was just about to say was it's one of those things where, you know, can can fat people make fun of fat people and get away with it? You know, I Sorry, used to, shit's cutting out here, Jay. Uh, I used to make fun of, of heavy set people Hello. when I was really heavy. Yeah, your Skype went to poop. Oh, man. Microsoft must know I'm on here again. My connection's good, but your Skype went to poop. Oh, there we go. You sound, you sound good again. I think it just it just must have hit a dipperoo. Yeah, I got to love Skype. We, we need an alternative alternate to Skype. We need an alternative... Skype can't be the only VoIP out there. No, there's got to be some other good ones. It's funny how Skype's always the one that comes up, though. I mean, we could do, like, Google Hangouts, but I don't think we've ever found a really good way to make Google Hangouts work. Mm, no, not really. It's anyway, so, okay, so she opened up the doors to a discussion about bullying and censorship, which was actually the topic here, not not Nicole Arbor. She was more of the conduit to the discussion. Yeah, let's just call and, her the catalyst, and, right? And, she Okay, she's the catalyst, and you know what? We can we can all we can all feel happy that if if you wanted something bad to happen to her, well, she got canned, she lost her jobs, so you know there is that. But again, it as much as you may disagree or agree with what she said, because plenty of people agreed with her rant. Uh, that that is it fair to punish someone for a freedom of speech and a freedom of for, first of all, do they have freedom of speech in Canada? I don't know. I mean, is that is that? Uh, they're so nice, they don't fucking need it. That, that's so, the thing. Is Canada is so, so she's nice. living in a gray area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think she's going to set the precedent that they're going to have to actually start like re reviewing their laws. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. So, so you and I talked a little bit about this uh, offline. Was we did. how do you how do you stop bullying? While if, if that bullying is through words, by the way, and we're not talking about like. I'm punching your face. I, you can't stop me. That's censorship. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> right. we're, we're talking about mean words. Like she's, That's only she, in Russia, right, Jay? <laughs> yes. That's just, that's just a normal like traffic altercation in Russia. You, know, you, you went through the red light. You're getting your face pounded in. We've it's all just, seen the dash cams. <laughs> it's, yeah. We, everybody loves Russia. So anyway, how, how do you keep her from having the right to saying what she wants without censoring her, uh, but then get mad at her when you don't like what she says? I under. I, I agree with the difficulty in navigating these waters. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing is, like you were saying, I mean, we're not talking about punching people in the face. But one thing that I've been I've become kind of acutely aware of over the last year is that word can be hugely damaging. Mm -hmm. They can be absolutely damaging. Like as much as you guys remember when, you know, I used to say, oh, fuck the trolls, blah, blah, blah. I don't care what people have to say. Fuck that. I'm slowly getting back to that mentality now because it's the only way to survive because you just let that hate itch you know just kind of beat away at you a little bit every single day it wears you down and if you're like an, an emotionally unstable person to begin with and you're already in a dark place mm -hmm. i mean words are every bit as damaging i mean there's been situations in my life where i would have rather had somebody just punch me the fuck out than say what they said such bad language sir fuck what you're terrible oh i'm sorry i'm no, sorry I'm, i get I'm, passionate i i i'm trying to get a censored on youtube here, jay no, actually, actually, the word "fuck" is one of the most versatile words in the in the English language. I've seen that video. That video is hilarious. It's, that goes that goes back like fifteen years ago. That is, remember, isn't that old? Remember, you can have you can have uh, "fuck" be nearly the entire sentence itself. "Fuck the fucking fuckers." <laughs> I remember that. And no, every single one of them has a different like a different part of the, the sentence structure. Yeah, and it was like narrated by like some guy that like you'd expect to narrate a documentary on Discovery Channel. Yeah, like, he, was, was, he was British. And he was, yeah, very well spoken. Well, I guess mm -hmm. that goes without saying if he's British. <laughs> America! Like I, like I said, somebody, somebody with a smart British accent could tell me the most off-the-wall thing, and yep. I would believe it. So, so back, to, back to the whole uh, subject of bullying and censorship, the person that I was telling Jay that, that kind of, like, piqued, I don't want to say, like, my interest in the subject, but more like question how I feel myself would be Boogie2988. A lot of yeah. you guys know him. He's kind of like a fat people Martin Luther King Jr., I think is how I refer to him. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I, and how does this tie into tech? Well, because she claims she was being censored by YouTube. That's why the channel was taken down. I still think it was automated takedown because of the thousands of, of um, flags she was getting. So 
I, I mean, we still don't know exactly what what happened there with the takedown. A lot of people but people are still questioning she wasn't even taken down; that she did it herself because a lot of evidence and all the direct links. Uh, were still accessible, which was really strange. Every other channel that has been taken down for DMCA or anything like that, all the links directly to the videos would just say this video, you know, the link you put in doesn't work. And in her case, all the links worked, but it said this video is set to private. So that, so again, we really don't know what happened. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, no. that it didn't get taken down, but it's entirely possible that was part of a publicity it, stunt. It got picked up by CNN, okay? Yeah, oh my and, God. And, and, I have a hard time believing she's actually smart enough to figure out a strategy. I have to say, I'm not sure she's smart enough to strategize at that level. No, and she has a team, too, but obviously they're not a very fucking good team if they she vet it. She has a team of makeup blocks. artists. I don't know if she really has a business strategy other than... And I bet you they're not Canadian, because they had been Canadian. I'd have to imagine... Because, let's, out because of three let's face of it, she has one business strategy. It's this. And you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm squishing my man poops together. That's her business strategy. That's her there business you strategy. There, there you go. There we go. I got, I got bigger ones than you right now. So I think it's more appropriate for me to do the illustrations of the woman <laughs> things of this, of this stream. <laughs> but anyways, guys, just to, just to kind of paraphrase what Boogie was saying is he said, I don't agree with what Nicole Arbor said, and I thought it was downright horrible, but I will defend her right to say it. Yeah. And Boogie's always kind of had that stance that he'll defend anybody. I mean, it doesn't matter what you, he, he, he believes heavily in freedom of speech. But on the flip side of it, um, when we look at it, is YouTube is a private company. Freedom of speech does not fall within their terms. They're not a government agency, they're not the public, they're a private company. And right. terms of service specifically state that you can't, you can't put porno on YouTube, you can't put hate speech. Right on YouTube. And the thing is, is satire and comedy are OK. And she's claiming that what she did was satirical. But at the same time, I've watched the thing like three times. Now, granted, I'm a fat man myself, so I'm kind of sensitive to the subject. But but keep in mind, I also am very self-deprecating fat person and I get comedy. I do. And all I felt through that whole video was a huge emphasis on hate and intolerance towards that group of people. Yeah. You know, I. I Okay, so I didn't watch her initial video. I didn't really have to because I got the Smart. gist of it. Uh, but I did watch that the the comedian that you lo linked on Facebook's response to it. And I oh, did watch, yeah. And yep. how he had to play portions of it. And he, he, he's a real comedian, by the way, like an actual comedian mm -hmm. uh, who did a very good job at ripping her apart and her, and her, her whole concept of, that of guy was that shaming. Thing. Yeah. So I got to see a lot of her video through that one, obviously. But there was nothing, there was nothing in that video that said... I'm trying to be funny. In fact, no. I mean, at the end of the day, she even tried to play it off like, I want you to be healthy so you can live on this earth longer and we can enjoy your beautiful human bodies. And it's like... At the very oh, end of her video, Jay, she pretty much spent like 30 seconds saying, no, but seriously, I want you to be healthy. You know, I want you to live longer, blah, 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 blah. And But you could tell it was completely disingenuous. It didn't fit at all with the rest of the video. It wasn't like a segue. It's almost like she finished recording and then they were like, fuck, that was dark. You should probably go back and say Say something to undo all that damage. Yeah, and it just came off as completely uh, ungenuine. Uh, but but then you've got like uh, the person we were talking about before is Megan uh, Tonjes, which is uh, like she's the a, opposite of yeah. Of... She's she's the opposite. She's a body body positive person. She's a little overweight herself, uh, but absolutely beautiful woman. I know her. I, I met her at a vlogger fair for like two years now. Amazing person. Absolutely amazing person. And she's she's an amazing singer, too. And mm -hmm. she took so much offense. Like, she is a – this lady, Megan, you know, if you met her in person, she is hard person to crack. Like, she yeah. is – she dropped the tears in her reply. Yeah. I have never seen a video where she was so bothered. It's funny. Uh, I, I told the wife, I said, oh, hey, Megan responded to the – made a response video. I bet you she rips Nicole a new one, and we watched it. And I was shocked. It was completely the opposite response I was expecting. She she literally that was the most heartfelt thing that I've ever like like literally watching it I almost went I almost came to tears I was like it was that it was that good of a video and then like you said the comedian I can't God I wish I could remember his name right now the guy with the huge beard who ripped her apart that mm -hmm. was funny that was absolutely hilarious yeah. or he was basically playing the response to every single thing she said in that video and and that was amazing but. It was one of these things where her video definitely divided an audience. I would say the majority definitely felt that the message she said she was sending was hate filled, but there was a lot of support for her too, which, you know, I personally at the time found disgusting, right? It doesn't but, matter what the topic is, there's always a line. 
there's always a line. There's always going to be, and she's always going to have an audience. And as soon as you, and as long as you have an established audience, you can keep doing what you're doing. I mean, she's not going to stop doing it if it keeps making her famous. But like we said, I mean, she's getting fired from TV programs now because she's crossed over that line. And just to be clear here, usually when a celebrity or a comedian crosses the line, right? What's the first thing that they do after they realize they crossed that line? Let's just Public say. Apology. Uh, Public apology. They try to explain their stance, even if they're unapologetic, like like some people have been. They still come forward and try to defend what they were actually trying to do. And she did she, not. On the other hand, no. She on the other hand is playing the victim of censorship. Exactly, the victim of censorship. She basically stood exactly by what she said and the tone. She defended her tone, and it was very weird because if you read her tweets. In in one minute, she's saying, no, I'm, I really want fat people to get healthy again. I really want them to live on this earth, blah, blah, blah. And then the next one is like, no, fat people are fucking disgusting and they need to know it so that they can fix it. It's like, why is your tone flip flopping so much? Yeah. You know, you could you just and that's the thing is, is at the end of the day, a comedian that that's talking about something like a good uh, a good comedian to be an example for this would be Lisa Lampanelli, right? Lisa Lampanelli, uh, for those of you that know who she is, she talks about everything. She says racist shit. She talks about fat people. She talks about sex and everything. But she herself is the butt end of the joke. It's self-deprecating humor, and she can speak from the perspective of it because she is in that class she's talking about. Yeah. And that's why – and, and she, don't get me wrong. She's still – Highly controversial. A lot of people don't agree with the stuff she says and get really deeply offended. Well, but my point being is her group isn't the one, you know, she, she's not attacking a group that she's not a member of. Yeah. You know what's funny is, uh, hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ban a few people here just because I can and I want to. Um, I know it's fun to ban people. I've been doing it a lot lately. <laughs> you know what, though? This, this, this also pl plays into the YouTube gaming thing, right? Where um, Jimmy, what was it, Jimmy Kimball? Was making yep. fun of the YouTube streaming. He's like, "Who yep. the hell would, are are gamers so dumb that they would watch other gamers play games?" And then he tried to he tried to play it off not by apologizing a very large group of people. <laughs> uh, I don't think he understands just how big and strong and powerful the gaming community is. Um, but he well, and plus it it's on the backside of Gamergate and stuff too. So it's like it's not exactly like the gamers are sitting happy and you know. But but look like at. But also look at what happened. Uh, I mean, he tried to play it off by taking the meme comments and responding to them, you know, live on air. Uh, yeah. Which is which was, of course, he only took the most asinine, unintelligent comments to try and take those and make it look. This is what gamers are like. They can't spell right. They can't formulate a sentence. You know. And, right. Uh, but I think Boogie's response to that was absolutely amazing. Did you see Jimmy's? Did you see um, Boogie's response to Jimmy? I did not actually. I need to go watch that definitely. Boogie. Well, no, no, he, it was a tweet. So oh, Boogie, tweet? What did he say? Bo Boogie tweeted Jimmy um, Kimmel. It's Kimmel, right? Yes. Yeah. He tweeted Jimmy Kimmel, and he said, Jimmy, the reason why most people watch gamers play is because they're a lot better than we are at what we're attempting to do. You know, the same reason you watch Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is epic. <laughs> yeah, I read that, and I was like, uh, hook and sinker. It is done. The conversation is over. <laughs> that is perfect. Uh, that, that is absolutely perfect. Anyway. But I, guess, I guess, here, let's go ahead and wrap it up so we can move on to some tech. But the reason why we wanted to address Jerry, this... Jerry, can you turn down your mic volume? Everyone's telling me to yeah. turn you down. I've already turned you down to 30%, and they still say you're too loud. Okay, hold on. Let me drop my gain. How's Is that, is that better? It didn't change. Okay, hold on. How about now? We'll just have to let time tell. All right, here. I, I dropped it down a little bit. I assume that people complaining are, are first-timers here. They don't understand yeah. just how amateur hour this show is. And I'm really loud. I'm just a super loud person. You are loud. Uh, so anyways, just to wrap up the whole the whole Nicole Arbor situation, she kind of set the fire that put the whole thing in motion, but it's been something that's been a little bit of a tinderbox for a long time, and that is censorship versus bullying, basically, online. But at the end of the day, if your comedy is designed to basically be hurtful mm -hmm. in the first place, then I... I don't want to watch your shit. But again, I kind of agree with Boogie at this point. That's like, if you want to sink your ship and you want to shoot yourself in the head and you want to go find a group of toxic people, yeah. that's on you. Well, it's, but like, it, well, it's like, well, then don't walk around going, I don't understand what happened. Why yep. did I take down my channel? But the other thing is, is don't call bullshit on freedom of speech 
when this is a private company and YouTube has a policy against that type of video. Now, you may not agree that YouTube classifies it correctly. And, and again, YouTube brought it back. So obviously, YouTube thought that, that she was within her rights to say what she, she, was suppo- what she said. But at the same time, it's like, no, if, if a video gets taken down because some guy's up there and he's saying racial this and racial that and saying that all, you know, like, for instance, black people should be eradicated or some shit like that. No, that does not belong on YouTube. If you want to go create your own website and find some overseas company that will host that shit and stream it, knock yourself out. But YouTube is not for you to put that filth. It just isn't. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the other topic that's guaranteed to create a divide amongst the peoples. <laughs> How about that there, Apple, huh? Yeah, how's about that, Apple? So, uh, so I'm okay. more of an orange feller myself. So we all know, and if you don't know, uh, this is going to come as a bit of shock to you, but uh, Steve Jobs died. Um, a long what? Time. I know, I know. There's some people that news takes a while to get around to. But it was uh, 2010, Steve, wasn't it? Or 2011. I think it was uh, 10? It's been a while. I mean, it's been a long time. Anyway, it, so. It's been long enough for Apple to get completely derailed. So I'm sure you guys have all watched, like, the, the many different iterations of movies showing how important Steve Jobs was to Apple and how, you know, he came in, founded it, got kicked out, got brought back because they were failing, made the company super successful again, then died, and then the company had some other troubles, but again, is still making more money than, than the entire U.S. government <laughs> uh, combined. But basically, Apple has been running amok a little bit lately without Steve at the helm. And the, the, the two things that I want to cite, like, first off would be the Apple Pencil. Let's go ahead and just get, like, the funny ones out of the way. So the Apple Pencil, basically, you have a stylus that costs $100, okay? You, 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 at the end of the day, that's what you have. I don't give a shit what they say the feature set is on it. You have a stylus that is $100, and the meme that is circulating the internet right but, now that I would but, love to show you guys. Oh, but, go ahead. What? But, but, but it's a stylus made out of aircraft-grade aluminum and sapphire crystal tip. I don't know if that's true oh, or not. Oh, yeah. Just, I'm just no, saying, I think like, it was like adamantium, and I think it was powered by uh, leprechaun, uh, leprechaun pubic hair. I it, think was was powered, it was powered by Minecraft Redstone. By <laughs> Redstone. I like that. There you go. <laughs> uh, see, I started, play, I started playing Minecraft now. All of a sudden, I feel like I know what I'm talking about. I don't know how to make anything out of Redstone, guys. I'm sorry. I'm very new. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I've always been, I've played Minecraft for like six months and still couldn't figure out how to do half the shit and always had to play with other people. But You're like, I made I, a door. Yay. I know. I made a door. Oops, I accidentally pushed the wrong button and deleted it. No, creepers in my house. Boom. <laughs> uh, so anyways, you got a $100 stylus. But here's here's where it gets funny is... Uh, years and years and years ago when the iPhone, I think it was like the iPhone, uh, first generation, like when the first iPhone came out, Steve Jobs gets, Steve Jobs gets up on stage and the first thing he starts doing is ripping on every other company for having a stylus. He basically mm-hmm. says yeah. like, it's stupid to have a stylus. Who wants to have this thing with yeah, your he, screen? It's a touch screen, right? Yeah. He made fun of it. He's like, how are you going to interface with it? A stylus? He did. No. He, yeah. I know. I watched, I, I watched that yeah. keynote. Yeah. 2007. S- so, so, you know, so you got to have that for context to understand this, that Apple is now basically releasing a stylus that they're calling a pencil because everybody else calls them pens and stylus. They want to be different. So they're like, we're going to release the Apple pencil. It's going to be a hundred dollars because you know, Apple, they, they, they really like those really super high price points. You know, the packaging's probably cost more than the product did to produce. Uh, so, so now you've got this hundred dollar stylus and Steve Jobs himself basically went on record saying that nobody should ever have to use a stylus. It's the dumbest fucking thing ever invented yeah. in every other remember, – remember, remember when Steve Jobs did a visual aid of how the, how the interaction of your device should always work? He held up his finger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. So, so, so – and, and everybody knows this. It's still pretty much fresh in everybody's mind, especially the Apple fanboys that have been there for the whole time. But it's just really strange that now Steve's out of the picture and you have two things that I don't think Steve would have ever gone for. And one, that's a smartwatch. Yeah. And the other one is the stylus. Now, now to kind of segue away from the stylus, because what Does are you going to Does the smartwatch have its own stylus? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little toothpick. Um, so the smartwatch, I have one, guys. I went and bought an Apple Watch. And it, wah, was, like, it was like, yeah, I know exactly. It was like $500. Wah, wah. I had to have one. It was the new what? shiny. And uh, no, no, the one that I got was the Apple Swatch Sport. And then I got the warranty thing with it because, you know, being a watch, I, I smash those things and break them all the time. So I get the watch and I have pretty high expectations for it. Now, to give you guys some background, I had a Pebble. I didn't like the Pebble. That's just me. But it was more of a, a gripe I had with the company and their quality control than the product itself. You, you so just, do have a, and you do have some rant videos about your Pebble. 
Uh, actually, I didn't put any of them online. Oh. I did. I shot well, them. I edited them, and never published any of them because they were just they were just too toxic. I didn't want that tone. Well, then, well, then I'm I'm miss, I must be remembering our conversations offline about it then. Oh yeah, I shit over shit all over Pebble in a lot of our tech talks. But you shit uh, all over a lot of things, sir, including. But the, the thing bowl. is, is what whether I don't I don't like Pebble <clears throat> because of the company, not because of the product. Pebble, a lot of people really love it because it's the only smartwatch you only have to charge like once a week, and it does what it oh. does fairly well. Before we go forward on this, yeah, um, I I need to get my Apple Music playing. Yeah, get your Apple Music. Let's let's, let's keep right. something to it right. All right, give me a second. You, you just you just kind of keep going, and I'll just start playing it when I find it here. Nice. Okay. So, anyways, guys, I get the Apple Watch. Previously, I owned the Microsoft smartwatch. Do you guys remember that? You probably don't, because Microsoft really sucked ass at marketing for a lot of their products, especially hardware, back in the day. But anyways, there was like five different watches that Microsoft made through uh, through various different manufacturers, and they all ran their little operating system, and it was just a liquid crystal display. It was actually very similar to what the Pebble is today, but overly complicated, and the charging mechanism never worked. I, I've decided well, what I want to do here is after, at the end of this segment, I want you to, let's see, how long is this file? This file is, or this this song here is 33 seconds long oh we lost the, we lost the jerry i don't think i i didn't disconnect him there you are i was yeah, like i didn't I was, I was like i didn't disconnect you <laughs> you just kind of cut out well, the last thing i heard from you was 33 seconds no i your camera's not on oh it isn't uh oh no. i better fix that hold on All hold right. on technical difficulties we'll there you can see me can you see there me now? we go let's put it Boom, there we are. Okay. okay. Um, so the, the little Apple music thing is 33 seconds long. Okay. So at the end of this segment, I want you to kind of think about like a 33-second commercial for the, for the pen or the pencil. You got and, it. And, and we'll do an improv or you get to do an improv pencil ad. You, we're doing it. We're totally right. doing so it. So the music okay. ready to go. We'll do it at the end of this segment. Okay, so so guys, back to the back to the smartwatch. So I had the Microsoft smartwatch. It was okay. It was kind of gimmicky. Uh, pretty much all I used it for was weather and time. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how that's how worthless it was. It didn't really do anything with your phone, and it received everything over a radio frequency. Like we're not even talking like cell cell tower stuff here. We're talking just rate just pure radio frequency, um, and they didn't work everywhere. Anyways. That was a long time ago. Now you got Apple coming out with, again, this, this is what Apple kind of does. Microsoft drops the ball and is way ahead of their time. So now Apple steps up. Something that I don't think Steve Jobs would ever have approved and releases the watch. And the watch basically is another interface to the phone. Without the phone, the watch just tells time. It doesn't right. do anything beyond that, right? So uh, I put on my watch. And the build quality on it seems nice. The touch interface on it is actually pretty responsive. And the screen looks great. And I think it's awesome. I'm not wearing it right now. Yeah, and the reason being is the software is beyond buggy on. Not it. only that, it makes you it makes you act like a complete dick to people you're talking to. What I mean by that was how many times are you talking to Perillo, and like because of how animated, do you have to flip your wrist over to make it r respond? Because you know, oh yeah, yeah 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 it's supposed yeah. to be you lift your arm and it just turns on, but it never does. You have to do the whole yeah. But but at Vlogger Fair, I kept seeing I kept seeing Chris had to do have to do the very animated like yeah, and, and like look at his arm. And he, he was yeah. very, he was very, like very stern in the way he brought up his arm. So he'd be sitting there talking to him, and he'd go to check a notification, but it almost looks like, ugh, what time is it? Yeah, you know, this conversation's over because you know, look, there's the time. Yeah. So, like the way he had to bring his arm up just to make it respond, it almost looked like he's telling you, like, oh, yeah, look at the time. Now I gotta go. I feel like, like, like Steve Jobs seriously would have just thrown the thing in the garbage and not even continued. And the reason why I say that is, is you make a good point. One thing we know about Steve Jobs is that he always wanted the experience to be a polished one, right? He was all about it appearing to be more like magic than science, yeah. right? And then you've got the smartwatch. Here's the bugs that I've run into that I, that I just piss me off. Like, this is why I'm not wearing it today. Every time you need to see it, you got to flip your wrist over and flip it back, right? Mm -hmm. Which 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 looks like you're like you know I don't know masturbating something with a very very crooked penis, but uh, now that you've got that vision stuck in your head, uh, with the with the watch you have to do that. But not only that, but when you're doing directions, like Thanks I was tell, that, telling telling yeah you're welcome. When you're do when you have the GPS software load done, it only works with Apple Maps, which we all know are it, Apple Maps are the worst. They'll drive like seriously, they'll just steer you off a cliff into the ocean. Doesn't matter. Le lemmings mode, and so you drive along. And it pops up, and I, I love how it's supposed to work. If it worked right, I would love it. It, it. it taps your wrist with a cool sensation. It's not a vibration. It's more of a tap. You look down, and it says which way to turn and how far to turn. It's like just very, very simple information. The problem is 
Half the time it's super delayed and you miss your turn before you get the damn screen up. And then the other thing is if anybody sends you an SMS message or calls your phone while you're doing it, it flips the screen away from your directions. And then when you're done with that interaction, it doesn't go back to the directions. So you have to basically go open apps, go back to the thing, reopen my, my Apple Maps right. on this thing. And so, so it ruins it. Like basically I don't even use it for navigation anymore because I've missed so many damn turns. And then when you sync it to the iPhone, it fucks Siri up on the iPhone. You pull out the iPhone, you hold down the button for Siri, and Siri just sits there. It doesn't. It doesn't make the ding noise. It doesn't wait for you. And, and a lot of people have reported the same issue. I'll be and honest. And they've done two software updates. They haven't fixed it. i will be honest. I don't know how much of this is making it up to YouTube right now because I think YouTube is having a problem. Uh oh. I've, I've got uh, upstream health is good on my end. I've got zero drop frames, and we've been live for 31 minutes. But the, like YouTube is just not responding for me. Well, I'm watching the stream. The stream's still going, but then again, it's delayed by. You know who knows oh, how. Okay. So you're hearing yourself talk though. Yeah. Hold um, on. Let me see. I, was, I mean, obviously we're still connected. Yep. yep. So. No, we're still we're still going. It's, so prob like, it's probably a node issue on my end then. At least on receiving it. Must be. It. Yeah. No. It's, no. We still look good on the stream. Stream still looks live. If, it's it's weird how I can up I can send up to YouTube without any problems right now, but I'm I can't actually view the YouTube watch page right now. Weird. Yeah. And, well, at least and, it's still and, working. So don't touch anything, Jay. And Skype still says internet connection problem between you and I, but clearly that's not the case. Yep. So guys, in a nutshell, the Apple Watch is is honestly not ready for prime time. Steve Jobs never would have greenlit it. It, it interferes launch? with the phone. This I, it's probably what about six six or eight months. I want to say still have this many problems after that long. No, no, and there's been two songs. And they claim that there's oh what, the the second version of the OS is dropping. You know, with their latest announcements. Hopefully, they address a lot of these problems. Um, but it's all stuff that shouldn't have shipped. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're bad issues that anybody like testing this thing for 15 minutes on a lunch break would encounter these issues. Right. And they continued forward. Like here, here's one that really pisses me off is Dick Tracy. Right. Everybody likes the Dick Tracy had the watch where he could talk on it. Right. That's mm -hmm. like so now you can finally do that with the Apple Watch. But the speaker in it is so quiet that even just driving down the road with the windows like rolled up in your car, just the engine noise or the wind noise is enough to completely kill that speaker. And you can't hear it unless you put it up to your ear like this. Mm hmm. And the Skype call is gone again. Better than to just have it just piss off a bunch of people. And I just lost my video again, didn't you? Yeah, the video's gone. All right, well, let me push the little button. Now back. I need, to, I need to redo my network here. I've got a, a really crazy <laughs> bridging bridge to a bridge of a bridge type of system. <laughs> and uh, it's, I've actually got some hardware that was sent to me to kind of redo the network here. So we'll see. I'm typing in chat right now. Technical difficulties are just a feature of Tech Talk. It's not really a technical difficulty, though. The stream's still going, right? Yeah, but they said audio's lagging, and I could even see it over here. It was, like, jumping. And, no, and... For, a second, for a second there, it did hiccup. Okay. No, no, it looks like it's smooth now. Every, everything yeah. seems to be working all right. But Apple Watch, not ready for prime time. It's literally just going to sit on the charger on my nightstand until another software update drops that hopefully addresses some of these issues. But I was really disappointed for something that cost so much. It was developed by Apple. Was just 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 had such a bad experience. It was Obvious. nothing like the iPhone at all. But yeah, even the experience on the iPhone has gotten a little bit less than desirable. No, that's true. That's true. And the thing is, is when we sunk the i when you sync the watch to the iPhone, it creates some new bugs on the iPhone itself. It's almost yeah. like a virus in a way to the iPhone. Uh, the the iVirus. <laughs> the iVirus, because <laughs> like I said, Siri works flawlessly for you me literally have, until you I sync the watch to it. And then, you no, literally it have to wear the virus. All right, so should we, do the, should we do the commercial for the Apple Pencil? All right, let me get the music queued up. Let's do this. All right, I, I can't see chat or anything. So, uh, oh wait, there we go. It's loaded for me now. So let me bring up the chatter. All right, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and do... Jerry is going to do a 33-second commercial about the iPencil. And I, well, the Apple Pencil, remember. We don't oh, call it I anymore. I forgot. Steve's dead, so I is no longer used. I forgot. All but, right. we still, but we still call it iPhone, iPad, iMac. I know. It's very so. confusing. Don't try to understand it. It'll hurt, it'll hurt your brain. So, all right. <laughs> On the count of three, you can take it away. You know what you're going to say? Let's do it. Yeah, no, well, I'm going to just figure it out as I go. <laughs> all right. Three, two, one, and go. Do you find that you have an iOS device that you operate with your finger? Well, that's probably because Steve Jobs told you at one point that using a stylus is for poor people. Well, guess what Apple has unveiled to honor Steve Jobs' memory long after he's passed? Not the stylus, but the Apple Pencil. 
We're talking about cylindrical aluminum, approximately the length of two fingers and only costing you a hundred dollars. Actually only $99 because if they put three digits in there, it might look offensive. So guys, get your eye pencil today and start using your device like Microsoft did 10 years ago. Was that close? <laughs> You you went about six seconds long, but, oh, but I did. Okay. you have to you have to look at my visual aid on the on the two fingers. Oh, did you put stuff? Did you put stuff up on the screen? No, I, I just more or less did a physical response to you saying okay. it's the size of two fingers. It's the size of two fingers. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait for the stream to catch up. <clears throat> but oh, uh, man. but honestly, okay. So now 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 we've kind of ribbed Apple. Now let's actually give them some praise for some cool stuff that they did. Okay, so the new iPhone 6s and 6 Plus actually come with a new feature called 3D Touch, which is fairly innovative. I don't know how well it's going to work in practice, but it's cool because now they've got pressure sensitivity on the screen. So now they can actually change the function between a slight touch and a hard push. So that's going to give you kind of a third dimension. Oh, I see your can, two fingers can, side by side now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my can, God. Good Jerry, thing I didn't say three fingers. That might've been the shocker. Can you tell the difference between a slight touch and a big push? Oh yeah. You know it. <laughs> that's what mm. she said, Jay. Oh, so, uh, so the whole 3D touch feature, I think, is actually kind of cool. Like, what do you think about that, Jay? Do you think that that's something that you could actually get used to is giving you another dimension of control over your device? Like, put, touching an icon versus pushing it? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Guys, I cannot see what Jay does, and I can't hear what he does either. Like, no, other I'm, than his I'm, I'm, okay. I'm going to give it a hard push. You're going to give it a hard push? Do you, do you like to give it a hard push on the front or the back of the device? Uh, there. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> it just it just isn't a live stream unless unless Jay drops ass at some point. <laughs> so uh, so another cool thing about the new iPhones and this and this is hilarious is they emphasize that they made them out of much stronger aluminum and much stronger glass. And all I could think about when I heard that feature was Bendgate. This is like their response to, oh, shit, we're embarrassed that our, that our phones basically you, crumpled do you, over. Do you think that Lou is going to see if he can if you can push his finger through the glass? I think Lou's going to put it under a drill press. Like, he'll do whatever it takes to get I, I guarantee Oh, look, guys, it didn't actually hold up against my carbide bit. <laughs> uh, I'm going to predict this. <laughs> Jay, Jay and I are going to predict this right now, that on launch day, within a half an hour of the device going public you're gonna have lou from unbox therapy driving over it with a dump truck like i'm, I'm just gonna <laughs> predict it at this point and be like it is not dump truck proof because that would be hilarious lou if you're watching this please please make that happen oh uh, yeah like lou is watching this i know right he's he's, he's too busy flying around in his f-18 hornet um over california anyways uh better cameras front and back that was to be expected right faster processor a9 chip so again to be expected and they have a new photography feature, which they touted as moving photos. And I just thought to myself, video? Anyone? <laughs> like, moving, appar moving apparently photos? Apparently, you can capture your moment is moving photos now. They've got like some moving photo oh. thing. I, I don't know anything about it, but I just when I hear moving photo, I think, I think I, video. I, 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 think, I think back in 1942, and they're going to see the yep. Flickr show. The Flickr show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> even, have, even have like a little thing on the edge of it. I was you have to say, hold up with your finger and flip yeah. it. They have the eye, the eye flip? The eye flip. There it is. Dude, they're going to steal that from us and make like a billion dollars. Oh, so uh, so the other device that they announced was the all-new Apple TV. I'll be honest. Uh, when I was over at Chris Perillo's house, he had an Apple TV, and I thought it was pretty cool. And I'll tell you, the only thing I really thought it was really cool is that you could mirror your iOS device to the TV, and it was perfect. It was like lag-free. You could play games on the TV. Your audio was on the TV. I only wanted to get it for that one reason, and I never got around to getting one because – like, honestly, I didn't really care. Like, it, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. But the new Apple TV, they got a version for $69 and a version for, I think, $159 or $169. But it's yeah. actually got so, a decent so, hardware. Somebody what? pointed out that CompuServe was first to the GIF. <laughs> oh, CompuServe was? <laughs> Noise. I remember no, CompuServe. Yeah, like, That's back in like basically, days. Basically, they're just a moving picture. Uh, and get back into the control panel. And we're going to go ahead and end tonight's stream. Yep, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Don't worry, our uh, last topic was Amazon stops selling the Fire smartphone, and we'll just uh, we'll just move that off the next week. Or if we talk about it at all. I mean, after all, it is a, it is a Fire phone. It's the Fire phone. Like, nobody even knows what we're talking about anyways. They're like, what, a phone from Amazon? That makes no sense. Yep, and my AMD Nano video is going to go live tomorrow, so if you guys want to check that out, feel free. But other than that, that is it.
I am turning this off and I'm going to go hang out with the family and probably play some Minecraft tonight. Sweet. I'm going to try to shoot my vlog and not have my lavalier mic fall off my shirt this time. You need to wire it under your shirt like I do. I'm going to now. I've learned my lesson, Jay. I've learned. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to go ahead and roll the outro. All right. And, take uh, it easy, guys. We will see you guys next week. Peace. Out.